Hey guys, Vegan Mr. RV here, back with another video, and today I'm back with some more Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Justice for All. In the last episode, we started off this game with the Lost Turnabout, or at least part one of the Lost Turnabout, in which Nick has amnesia. We're in recess right now, and I think we're explaining the situation to Miss uh, Maggie Bird here, who was our defendant. I can't believe my lawyer is trying to defend me in such a state. I, uh... Why didn't you tell me, sir? I'm sorry I didn't mention it to you. Oh, I know what to do! I already could fix something like this with a really strong shock to your system. Come on, lower your head a little. A Maggie kick should be all you need. Uh, no, 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 I think I'll pass on this one. Come on! I I'm sorry. Whenever I see someone in trouble, I have a hard time leaving them alone. I tend to stick my nose in where it doesn't belong and try to tackle everyone's problems. Well, my head's one problem you won't be tackling today. Well, we're here to solve your problem first. We can deal with mine later. For now, do you think you could fill me in on a few things? Of course, I'd be honored to. Uh, well, I guess we'll start with my name and then I can tell you about me. No, no, that's okay, really. I think I know in your name pretty well by now. I was wondering if you could help me figure out a few things about myself. So, my name is Phoenix Wright? What a weird name. Hmm, this is serious. You really don't remember. I'll tell you what, sir. You can have this back and maybe it'll help. This is a business card? I got this from you. It's my most prized possession. You can borrow it for now and please give it back, okay? Okay. There's some numbers written on the back. Oh, that's your cell phone number. I guess for now we should stop talking about me and start talking about this case. This case? Yup. Can you think of anything that would be helpful for me to know? Um, what can I tell you? Uh, um, hmm. I can't think of anything other than the incident with that cell phone, but... Cell phone? Yeah! Your eyes lit up when we talked about it at the detention center, sir. Hurry up then and tell me. This might be very important. Okay, Roger. It was on the day of the crime, just before 6 p.m. I picked up a lost cell phone while on walk with Dustin. All of a sudden, the phone started to ring. Um, hello? Oh, thank you. I've been searching for my phone. Is this yours? Oh, I'm glad you called. We can meet up and I can give this back. I'll be right there. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. You can call me Maggie. We agreed to meet up at 6 p.m. Dustin and I waited for the person to show up, but they never did. Hmm. So, where's the phone you found now? I gave it to you yesterday! Huh? To me? Is that that phone in my pocket? Y you mean this? Do you think it has anything to do with the murder? I don't really know. But if my eyes lit up... Ah! You were here all along! You're so mean! I called you a million times when you wouldn't pick up! And when I went to check the courtroom, everyone had already left! <laughs> Who the heck is this? Let me guess. I'm supposed to know this girl, too. Hey, good morning, Maggie! And good morning to you, too, Maya! So? So? How's it going? Is there a word for worse than abysmal? Oh? And what if I said that everything will be fine? That's right! It's Maya to the rescue with ultra-decisive, super-important evidence! Here you are, Nick! The thing you wanted me to bring! Huh? Oh, uh, thanks. What the heck is this? A list? It has about 20 people's names and phone numbers written on it. It was kind of tough, but I managed to dig up some dirt. It looks like these guys are no good. No good? As in... There's a group of con artists and the police are currently investigating. I think these guys are members of that group. Why would a group of con artists pop up in a case like this? Don't look at me! Hmm, and where did you get this list from in the first place? What? Don't you remember, Nick? You're the one who 
asked me to look this up yesterday. Oh, is that right? These numbers were in the memory of that phone Maggie found. Hmm, so that's where they're from. You're awfully forgetful these days, Nick. I hope I never get to be a forgetful old prune like you. Uh, Maya. Actually, Mr. Wright is... Mr. Wright, recess is now over. Please bring the defendant and return to the courtroom immediately. Oh, oops. Guess you have to get going. We can talk about you being old later, Nick. B wish us luck. I guess I have all the pieces now. More or less. All that's left is to put it all together. I'm not going to lose this. I can't. Come on, Nick. Better get a move on. Uh, yeah. Ah, oh, he doesn't even remember Maya. He doesn't remember Maya. Sad. All right. Court will now reconvene. Please call your next witness to the stand, Mr. Payne. Yes, Your Honor. But before I do, if I may say a few words. What is it, Mr. Payne? It's about the next witness. He has a tendency to say things that rub the people the wrong way, you see? So I asked the court might be a little lenient on... There's no need to give a preface. Just hurry up and call your witness, please. Y yes Your Honor. Uh, the prosecution calls its next witness. A drifter who was taking a walk in the park on the day of the murder. Please state your name for the court witness. Before I do, I'd like to clarify a little something. Oh, uh, alright, go ahead. Just now, you introduced my wonderful self to the court, correct? Perhaps as a drifter who was taking a walk? D did I? But I will not stand for it. Now you've tinted the col- Whoa! Now you've tinted the court's eyes and colored me wrongly. Sure, I suppose calling me university to- Okay, I can't read that fast. I can't read that fast! I can't read aloud that fast! I'm not so I'm not pressing anything by the way. That was all just like automatically going. Yes, yes, I understand. I'm very sorry. I will be more careful from now on. But what is he? A human chatterbox? Ugh. I have to question him. Fashion, cars, women, glasses, and of course university. First rates need only apply. Glasses? But you aren't wearing glasses. That's enough. Your name, witness. Oh, is that how you want to play this? Using your power and influence to keep the young people down. I see how you work now. You old people and your dirty tricks. You thought you had me, but you had thought wrong. I'm sorry, it won't happen again. Oh, man. I forgive you. Alright, I suppose I could tell you my name. I am Richard Wellington, the drifting virtuoso with a PhD in drifting, as it were. If you wanted to, you could call me university student in transit. <clears throat> Mr. Wellington, on the day of the murder, you were taking a uh, strolling through the park, correct? It would appear that you are attached to that word. If you must, then by all means. But I remind you that I'm in no way a creepy visit a boy out on a walk with mommy. If you must know, I am... Anyway, please testify to this court what you saw during your walk through the park. See, you said it again. Taking a walk. You know, you... What you witnessed will do, Mr. Wellington. Yeah, this guy's a bit... Oof, this guy's a pain, isn't he? I was at the park all afternoon, deep in thought about my life situation. I don't remember the time all that well, but I do believe it was past 6 p.m. All of a sudden, a police officer falls from above, right in front of my eyes. Without a thought, I looked up, and there I met the eyes of a charming young lady. Of course I remember her sweet face. It was that of the pretty defendant there. The only other thing I saw was the banana that fell with the police officer. Banana? Well, yeah, certainly a decisive testimony. Decisive? Nick, did you hear what he just said? Yeah. That's all you have to say? How can he be so calm? It's strange. My mind is very calm and clear. Maybe it's because I believe in my client. You mean Maggie? Yes. And if she really is innocent, that can only mean one thing. That guy is lying. 
You will now question the witness, Mr. Wright. I'll find out the truth no matter how well you craft your lies. Banana? There was a banana? There was not a banana. We know exactly what that quote-unquote banana was. Uh... Banana that fell. I forgot the left and right buttons don't work, so I have to actually tap the buttons. Ah! It sucks. Mr. Wellington, I believe I have the bananas you saw right here. Ah, so you knew about the bananas too. Why didn't you say so earlier? But don't think you can use this as a way to pull more information out of me. And that's where you'd be wrong. Mr. Wright, what is the meaning of this? Isn't that the baseball glove? Huh? What? A baseball glove? Doesn't it look delicious? Care for a bite? That's, that's, uh, that's not. It's a, uh, no! Your Honor, I think this proves one very important fact. This witness loves bananas, has bad eyesight, or, what? Nope. Knows nothing about baseball. Cool. Um, the answer is has bad eyesight. <laughs> By the way, just how bad are your eyes? Huh? How? What? You? Why are you asking me about this all of a sudden? Here on her, it's a very simple. It is very simple to mistake a glove for a bunch of bananas. No, I don't think so. Objection overruled. You. You're one of those people. Yes, you know what I mean. You're like those people who refuse to accept Galileo. Okay, he's on. He's he's, he's on his crap again. I'm gonna I'm just let it. I'm just let it go. That's why I asked you how bad your eyesight is. They're both twenty at twenty two hundred. I suppose you're going to tell me that's terrible, right? Why are you not wearing your glasses today, then? So, uh, normal vision is 2020. That means you can see. 2020 means that you can um, see. Uh, no, if something is 20 feet away from you, you can see it like pretty clearly. Um, if uh, 20, 2200, I believe, is legally blind. Yeah, I, be I, be I believe 2200 is legally blind because that means if that uh, an object is 200 feet away, you have to be standing within 20 feet of it in order to see it clearly, and any farther it's gonna be blurry. And I'm pretty, cause I'm pretty sure you can't like, drive with 2020, or 2200 vision, with, without correction, like meaning without glasses or, uh, contacts or something, LASIK, something of the sort. Either way, this guy's vision is really bad. It is actually very bad. It is like, borderline legally blind, if not legally blind. Um, um, that's because I lost them recently, you see. Of course, I was planning on getting a new pair made right away. But, you know, my glasses are no ordinary glasses, so to replace them... How about when you witnessed the crime? Were you wearing your glasses then? How about it, witness? You are an unrelenting evil man. You're like those people who were... Okay, he's on his thing again. I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let that go. Which boils down to you were not wearing your glasses at the time. Therefore, the identity of the woman at the scene of the crime and that of the defendant cannot be proven to be to be the same by this witness. Objection! But the height difference is only nine feet. It's very possible for him to see the face of the culprit standing on the upper path. Like I said, if some you need to be within twenty feet of something to see it clearly with. Some with uh, an object if you have 2200 vision. In 2020 vision, you can see pretty much everything very clearly. Or at least you have it's normal vision, you know. So without glasses, the only things that look blurry are like the things that are like I don't know, like 20 miles away, S or however long. You know, you can see a skyscraper very clearly from wherever you're standing, whether that be. 20 miles away or right up front. You can see it very clearly, whereas with 20 200 vision, you need to be within 20 feet of that skyscraper in order to see the whole thing clearly. And even then, you might not see the whole thing clearly because the top of that skyscraper is likely way more than 20 feet higher than you. Anyways, vision is weird to explain. 
just know that this guy has very bad vision and desperately needs some sort of correction, whether that's contacts, uh, glasses, or LASIK. Please tell the court what happened next in the moments after you witnessed the crime. The girl on the upper path ran away as soon as she realized I was there. After that, I immediately called the police station to report the crime. It must have been 6.45 p.m. when I made the call. They must have had a lot of free time on their hands as they showed up within 10 minutes. Hmm. So the person who was on the upper path saw you and then ran away. Yes, that's correct. Which is why even if someone without a even someone without a superior brain like mine can understand that that girl is the murderer. You may question the witness now, Mr. Wright. Okay. Okay, there is one statement we must definitely present on. It must have been 6.45 when I made the call. You have to present the autopsy report that states that the time of death was 6.28 p.m. Mr. Wellington, would you please take a look at this? You mean the victim's autopsy report? According to this, the murder occurred at 6.28 p.m. So what of it? You said that you called the police immediately after the murder took place. However, by the time you had called the police, it was already 6.45 p.m. There's clearly a fi- that's not 15 minutes, that's 17 minutes, but okay. <laughs> but yeah, there's a 17 minute difference. I think this court would like to hear what you were doing during this 17 minute gap. I refuse to say 15, it's not 15. The witness was in shock at the time after witnessing a terrible murder. It's only to be expected that he would be a little dazed. Objection. 17 minutes is hardly what I would call a little dazed. Mr. Wellington. Yes? Explain yourself. What were you doing during those 17 minutes? So this is actually just a text or error that's been overlooked throughout this entire trial. So it's going to say 15 every time. It's 17 minutes. Answer the question! Hi, uh... Telephone! Uh, I mean... <clears throat> spit it out! I, I was searching for a phone booth! A phone booth? You mean you don't have a cell phone? Cue your questions! As if you're trying to open all the layers of my Matryoshka doll! You must really think you're something special. Witness! I lost my cell phone. There, are you happy? You lost it? Unbelievable. You lose your glasses and your cell phone. You must be very scatterbrained when it comes to your belongings. What? Are you saying that first-rate people are never allowed to lose things? Haven't you ever heard that all genius- Okay. Moving on! Enough! Oh man, oh man. Wait, hold on a second. He lost his cell phone? Nick! That cell phone! Could it be? You mean this phone Maggie found? There's no way. Boy, I didn't see this coming. What should I do now? Question further or back off? Well, okay, come on. Obviously, we have to question further. <clears throat> Mr. Wellington! Where is your cell phone right now? <laughs> what are you getting all excited about? You seem a little confused. I found my phone, I'll have you know. See? Here it is. Oh, I see. Hmm, looks like he's got his phone. And I thought Jack maybe, just maybe, this was his. Hmm. Well, then I think we've cleared this issue up. At the time of the murder, the witness did not have his cell phone because he had lost it. Therefore, the delay in his call was caused by his search for a phone booth. Well, that's the gist of it. I guess you could put it that way and leave it at that. Do you have any further questions, Mr. Wright? No further... Oh, excuse me. No further questions or there is something. There is something. 
Oh, jeez. Your Honor, the witness's testimony does not make any sense. I don't believe that there was ever a need for the witness to search for a phone. How dare you? You can't just make outrageous claims like that. You do have some sort of proof, don't you? Well, yeah, uh, of course. This evidence should be good enough, I think. Alright, let's have this proof then. Please present proof that the witness had no need to search for a public phone booth. I believe it's Crime Photo 1. Yes, Crime Photo 1 is what you need to present here. It's quite simple, actually. Please take a look at this. Not the crime scene photo? Is there a problem with it? Oh, there's nothing wrong with the picture. But if you don't understand my logic after looking at it, something is wrong with you. No! It's, it's a, a phone booth. That's correct. All the defendant had to do was walk three steps. Mr. Wellington, why did you not use the phone that was right in front of you? What does reporting the crime a little late prove for the defense? The witness can't explain what he was doing for those 17 minutes. That is reason enough to throw suspicion on his testimony. Yes, this is very true. What do you have to say for yourself, witness? Then I bet this phone is really his, Nick. He must have killed Dustin to get his phone back. But Maggie said that she was going to return it to him. So there was no reason for him to kill for it. And on top of that, we still have the phone she found anyway. Hmm. But if he wasn't looking for a cell phone, maybe he was looking for something else? See? Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor? Do you have any thoughts you would like to share with the court? Can you offer an explanation as to what the witness was doing during those 17 minutes? Yes, I have an idea, or no, I have no idea. Yes, I have an idea. There's only one possible explanation. Alright, let's hear your explanation. However, be forewarned that if your explanation is not persuasive, you will be penalized. Think carefully before you present, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Ugh, I probably shouldn't have said there was only one possibility. Yeah, no, if Edgeworth was here, he'd be on your ass immediately. Please present to the court the one piece of evidence that will answer the following. Why did the witness call the police right away? He had to present the glasses, the broken glasses. Mr. Wellington. What? Don't do that. He almost gave me a heart attack. These are your glasses, aren't they? Ah, where? Where did you find... I believe the court all heard what you just confessed to. That these glasses are in fact yours. I'll tell you where they were found, Mr. Wellington. These glasses were found under the victim's body. Uh, under the victim's body? Order, order. And now, wait a second, hold on. I didn't confess or confirm a a anything. Your Honor, I think the answer is quite clear here. As he fell, Dustin Prince grabbed the culprit's glasses. The culprit knew that he had to find his glasses and searched frantically for them. What he didn't realize is that they were under the victim's body. And that is why it took him 17 minutes to make that call. Mr. Wright, are you... are you indicting the witness as the real murderer? Of course! That is precisely what I'm doing. I, I wouldn't do that to yourself, buddy. That's gonna hurt. I know I'm right. He is the real murderer. Did you figure it out, Nick? More or less. Turns out this cell phone was the key to this case after all. Anyway, now's our chance to deep six this guy. I'll seek him in one shot. Yeah! This is so exciting watching you work again. Somehow my old self is coming back to me. It's time to sink or swim. Everything rests on the edge of a knife. This is the moment I've been waiting for. Order, order. Your Honor, the defense, the defense is making a mockery of this court. 
Without any solid ground to stand on, he accuses the witness of being the murderer. Yeah, that's right. I, I'm no criminal. This third-rate fraud of a lawyer. In that case, why don't we look at it from a different perspective? Let's hear your explanation as to why you're not the murderer. Why, that's... that's easy! Um, uh, for example, there's, um, the name the victim wrote. What about that? Oh, you mean the name Maggie? Yeah, even an idiot like you can read that, right? But we already know this is not written by the victim himself. After all, the defendant's name is M-A-G-G-E-Y, and the victim was left-handed. In other words, in order to make the defendant look guilty, the real criminal used the victim's right hand to write her name on the ground. But, 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 wouldn't that just mean the real criminal was someone the defendant knew? Otherwise, how would the person know that her name was Maggie? Uh, Maggie! That is a good point. The witness didn't even know of Miss Bird before the trial. I forgot! Is there any way this creep could have known Maggie's name beforehand? There was a way, there was no way, or there was a way. There was a way. We have this all pre put together. It would be best if I could prove that the witness had a chance to learn that the defendant's name is Maggie. Now will the defense please present its case? How could the witness have known the defendant's name? The cell phone! Mr. Wellington, you didn't have your cell phone with you on the day of the murder, correct? So what if I didn't? When you realized you had lost it, what did you do? What did I do? Didn't you try to find it by calling it? Why, you... How did you... Your Honor, these questions have nothing to do with... Overruled. Mr. Wright, where are you going with this line of questioning? Do you think there was some relation between the witness's cell phone and the murder? I do, Your Honor. On the day of the murder, Maggie Bird picked up a lost phone in the park. And she also received a phone call from the owner of the phone. Um, hello? Oh, thank you. I've been searching for my phone. Is this yours? Oh, I'm glad you called. We can meet up and I can give this back. I'll be right there. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. You can call me Maggie. That was when you learned her name was Maggie. <laughs> but you made one fatal mistake. Fatal mistake? My client's name is Maggie. Again, they, they just say it instead of spelling it out. I wonder why. This is a mistake that, you could, that could only occur if all you knew was how her name sounded. Order, order. But, Your Honor, the witness has no motive. And your point is? It's very simple, Your Honor. A person would usually not kill someone without reason. Mr. Wellington had no reason to kill anyone. That is absolutely correct. I don't have a motive. Hmm, Mr. Wright? Your Honor? Can you explain what motive this witness could have had? It's very simple, Your Honor. Are you sure, Nick? If I said I can't offer an explanation, then a trial's over, right? Yeah, but... Now then, please present to the court that the witness had a motive. You have to present the names list that Maya gave us earlier. Mr. Wellington's motive is right here! What's this? A list? These phone numbers were pulled from the memory of the phone the defendant had found. And we have determined that the people on this list are members of a certain group. You... you looked up all those numbers? Of course! This list of phone numbers was stored in the cell phone's memory. The names and numbers belong to people who are members of a certain con artist's group. What? Con artists? Can you explain why these numbers were on your phone, Mr. Wellington? This, this is an outrage! An invasion of privacy! Looking up the phone numbers on a person's phone is a worse crime than murder! That's not true, actually. You're one of those- okay, we're not- okay. We're- okay. I don't care, Mr. Wellington. 
All I want is for you to tell us what this list is about. You think you, any of you, know what it's like to be a refined man such as me? Your Honor, th this is, this is unjustified badgering of a witness. Objection overruled. Mr. Wright, what is the meaning of this? Why would the witness have members of a certain, of a group of con artists of, on his phone? My god, I can't read. Isn't that obvious? The witness is looking into the group, a victim of the group, or a member of the group. A member of the group, obviously. Mr. Wellington is a member of this very group. No! All of your friends' phone numbers are stored right here on this phone. If anyone were to look into these phone numbers, it would be all over for you. That is why you had to kill. No! This is too much! That does make quite a bit of sense. Well, Mr. Wellington, would you care to explain? I... Oh my... I got you now. I... That... I... That, that police officer... Your Honor! What is it, Mr. Payne? Your Honor, this is... This is unjustified badger... You tried that earlier. You said the exact same thing only a few seconds ago. Please, please, let's think about the context of that phone call. Okay, we've gone through this phone call several times now. The defendant had already promised that she would return the phone. After that, all Mr. Wellington had to do was beat Miss Bird and get his phone back. Why, then, would he need to kill anyone? Hmm, that is a valid point. What does a defense think about this? Hmm... If you think about it logically, then it makes sense. But maybe we should be thinking outside the box. Yeah, we think like that. Let's see. Maybe that slime ball saw something at the crime scene that made him commit murder. Your thoughts, Mr. Wright? Hmm, well... I don't think Mr. Wellington went to pick up his phone in a very friendly manner. But he was promised his phone, so why would he have been unfriendly to the defendant? I think he must have seen something that didn't agree with him when he got there. Well then, Mr. Wright, what was this something that didn't agree with the witness? You actually need to go into Profiles and present Dustin Prince. What Mr. Wellington saw was the victim. The, the, the victim? You mean Dustin Prince? Dustin Prince had gone on his date right after his shift was over. With no time to change, he went to the park still wearing his police uniform. Whoa! The girl that picked up my phone is with the policeman. He couldn't have known they were going out, so he began to worry. He was afraid that the policeman would ask a few questions before returning the phone. If I do anything suspicious, he might run a check on my phone. In his mind, it was possible they had already run a check on his phone. If you wanted to a pen, is that what you're saying? Exactly. The officer, whoa, Officer Prince was murdered simply because he was in uniform. Mr. Payne, do you have any comments? I am, um, I'm thinking. Hmm, it seems the truth has come out at last. The witness, Mr. Wellington, you are. <laughs> oh. It's not bad for a person with a third-rate education. What's that supposed to mean? The evidence. The evidence. Ugh, that guy is really creeping me out. All you've been waving around is talking about that suspicious phone. Suspicious phone number, this suspicious con room, that, and they're all on that phone. But who's to say that phone is really mine? Where's your proof? Your evidence! Do you want proof that this phone is yours? I already told you earlier! The phone I lost, I've already found You don't even have the slightest idea who the phone in your hand belongs to. But you can't be sure it isn't mine, you simpleton. What? You need help, buddy. We do seem to have a problem on our hands with this phone. Whose phone is it? Without knowing that, it's meaningless as evidence. 
Your Honor! This is bad. I can't let him turn the tables on me like this. Hmm. This cell phone. There has to be something I've overlooked. There's gotta be. Hmm. Maybe... The phone store numbers or fingerprints on the phone? Fingerprints on... Uh, no, what's important to note is that the ends of these options are marked with question marks. So, uh, what do you have to select? It's the fingerprints on the phone. Fingerprints on the phone, question mark. I got it! We should check the fingerprints! Fingerprints? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Wellington must have left some prints on his phone. Nick! Don't you remember? When you got that from Maggie, you wiped it off! I what? You said that there was sand all over it, so... Wiped it? I wiped it? Pretty thoroughly, too. Bro, you gotta chill! You gotta chill, dude! Oh, it's so, so much fun watching a third-rate trash babble like morons amongst themselves. Ah, oh, he's made a complete recovery! How many times do I have to say this? My phone is right here, you see. Oh, and incidentally, you can't check the numbers stored on this phone. It must have glitched because all the numbers just magically disappeared. You've got to be joking. He erased all the numbers I was going to use as evidence. Mr. Wellington. What's this? By the tone of your voice, it sounds like you still have some fight left in you. Where did you finally find your cell phone? Bro, you got... Go, to... Go see a therapist, dude. Go see a therapist! I... Oh my god! Now I remember! Looks like they hung up. Ah, oh, good. I finally found it. So that's when... What's wrong, Mr. Attorney? Why the harsh glare in your eyes? Nick! We've worked so hard to get him far, but if you don't do something quick, he's going to get off scot-free! I know. I know this phone has to be his. But how am I supposed to prove something like that? Mr. Wright, you cannot prove who the owner of that cell phone is. Your indictment has no basis and therefore no power. It looks like you came up a penny short. Where? Where did I go wrong? Don't blame yourself. You're merely a third-rate lawyer. You only made one big mistake. Who are you? What are you? That's something you haven't figured out for yourself yet. Who I am? The court hereby concludes this cross-examination. If that'll be all, I have to bid you gentlemen and ladies goodbye. I have a reservation at that ultra-fancy restaurant on the upper side of town. Thank you for your assistance. You've had a stressful day, so please, bon appetit. What am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to just let it go at that? Nah, bro, raise an objection! Please wait, Your Honor! Oh, right, Nick! I think I may be able to prove it. Prove it? Prove what, Mr. Wright? Everything! Your Honor, the cross-examination has already ended! Besides, the defense is just going to badger the witness with more inane questions. You will not harass the witness. Is that clear, Mr. Wright? Did you hear that? No harassment allowed, Mr. Attorney. Please, Your Honor. Very well. This is your last chance, Mr. Wright. You may present one piece of evidence to the court. I only get one shot at this. If you cannot prove everything, it's over for your client and for you. Do you fully understand? Yes, Your Honor. I'm sure you are well aware, Your Honor, but the cross-examination period has ended. Are you paying attention, Mr. Payne? I said that Mr. Wright could present only one more piece of evidence. Oh. 
Now then, Mr. Wright, this is your last chance. It all comes down to this. It's go time! Please present the one piece of evidence that will explain everything. Phoenix's business card! Why, thank you. How nice. Here, please have one of mine. That's not what's going on here, Judge. Wait, what am I doing? This isn't the time to be exchanging business cards. Your Honor, there is something very important about that card. And that is, the back of the card. The card is important because of what is on the back. Hmm? You wrote your cell phone number on the back, but... But that's exactly it. Can you please call this number from your cell phone? Huh? Right now? But court is still in session. It's okay. You'll see. Okay, if you say so. Is the defense preparing something, Mr. Wright? We are going to call my cell phone now. And then the court will see everything for what it is. All the idiotic, stupid things to... Dun, 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 dun. Okay. What? Why is my phone? And what is with a stupid sounding ringtone? Mr. Wellington. Hmm. How strange. I could almost swear that you're holding my phone. Your. Ah, no, 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 no. It can't. By the way, before I forget. Thank you very much for the lump on my head this morning. I don't think I need to explain any further, except to say... When you went to retrieve your cell phone, you mistakenly took the wrong one! Yeah, that's why I say don't do that, his face is literally blue, okay. Your face literally turned blue, dude. So that is what happened. You were knocked out by Mr. Wellington. He's a man who lives on his pride and self-image alone. And in order to hide his involvement with the con artists group, he has become paranoid and lost all ability to make rational judgments. Hmm. Then, then Mr. Wright, the phone you're holding. It's Mr. Wellington's, naturally. Speaking of that man, how is he, Mr. Payne? Ah, he was arrested and taken away, Your Honor. Very well. Now then, this court finds a defendant, Maggie Bird. Not guilty! That is all. This court is adjourned. shine through eventually. I'm so moved by what you've done for me, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Wright. I feel really bad for Dustin. He didn't do anything to deserve this. It's probably because of me. Huh? My whole life has been nothing but a whirlwind of bad luck and failures. Your whole life? Can't be that bad, could it? Since I was six months old, when I fell from the ninth floor of my apartment building, I've been hit by all sorts of vehicles, gotten sick from all sorts of foods, failed at almost every test I've ever taken, experienced almost every kind of disaster, and never won or even tied at a game of tic-tac-toe. My life has really been nothing but a string of disasters. That is, uh, pretty bad. Up until I went to college, I was known as a goddess of misfortune. And then, at the Academy, everyone called me Lady Luckless. Lady Luckless? What's worse is that my misfortune always seems to latch onto those around me. What do you mean? When I see someone in trouble, I always try to help. Ah, oh, that's right. You were talking about this earlier. It happened again recently, too, sir. There was an old lady pacing back and forth by the pedestrian crosswalk. I gave her my hand, and before I knew it, we were having dinner at my house. I'm sure that Dustin's gone because of me. That's not true! That glove didn't even have any sort of special meaning. He 
it was just a present to say thanks for covering one of my night shifts. Oh, I see. Everything is my fault. Dustin's death, your head being all messed up. Oh, uh, well, I don't think my head is that messed up just yet. I'm going to find a new life for myself starting now. Next time we meet, I'm sure I'll... I'm sure I'll find a whole ocean's worth of good luck by then, sir. Yeah. After all, the goddess of misfortune is all we name. You bet! I'm gonna make it, I promise! Next time we meet, I'll only be an unlucky person instead of a goddess. Yeah, that's the spirit. Well, Mr. Wright, Maya, I should get going. Okay, good luck to you. Thanks! You take care of yourselves, too. Oh, what a horrible day. I've gotten my memory back, but things are so a little fuzzy. But you're okay, and that's what counts. You really had me worried. Come on, let's go back to the office. Oh, I'm afraid to ask, but here goes. So, this might sound bad, but, uh, who are you? What? I thought you said you got your memory back! At that moment, everything really did come back to me. Detective Gumshoe? He's someone I've had clashes with in the past during certain cases. But he's also been a good ally during others. The judge? He's a lovable, kind old man who is easily swayed by other people's opinions. But in the end, he always comes up with the right verdict. This person... I haven't got a clue. He seems to know me, but... Maybe he's mistaking me for someone else? And this girl... Maya? You... You finally remembered! This is Maya Faye, my assistant. That's right. I have so many unforgettable memories about her. For example... Earth to Nick! What's wrong? You keep staring at me! Don't for- Don't tell me you've missed me! Uh, well, yeah, I suppose I have. I feel like I haven't seen you in ages. Oh? Well, I'm back now, so it's time for us to create new memories together. Alright, sounds good. All the phone numbers on my phone were erased by Mr. Wellington. I guess I have to start over from the very beginning. Come on, Nick! Let's go to our usual burger, burger joint. Burger? Okay, okay. Actually, it hasn't even been that long since she came back into my life. And that story... That story began on one rainy afternoon, two months ago. But, that is for next time. That is the end of the Lost Turnabout. So yeah, that is the end of the Lost Turnabout. The story that he's talking about is the next case, which I believe is called Reunion and Turnabout. Reunion and Turnabout. I should, like, enunciate a bit more. Um... But, yeah, that is all for this episode, so I hope you guys have enjoyed, and next episode we'll start reading and turn about and see how Nick and Maya finally met together, met again after, like, after she left at the end of Turnabout Goodbyes. But, like I said, that's for, ne that's for next time, so like, subscribe, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye!